history of Balloon Fest um, goes back about 20, we're coming up on 25 years here within the next few years. I, and I think it really got started uh, because Ashland was a rubber town, um, doing a lot with uh, latex balloons. Um, it was just kind of a natural progression uh, into the hot air balloons. Um, you know, it started out with just a few and it's, you know, grown every year from then. The four-day festival includes food, music, and of course, balloons. It all begins Thursday night with a pre-event picnic at Freer Field. So folks can see firsthand without a ton of crowd on Thursday night, they can come out, have some barbecue, and uh, see the balloons take off from the field. And the actual event kicks off with our opening ceremonies, usually around four or five o'clock on Friday. And that's really, truly when the public part of the event takes place. Uh, we'll have opening ceremonies, uh, sometimes we'll try to have a band. Most of the balloons, about half of them, come back for what is called the balloon glow. And if you haven't seen that, that is what most people come out for is the balloon glow. And that's where the balloons are tethered on the ground, kind of in a horseshoe there on Freer Field. And um, they kind of light up their burners and light up their beautiful colors. Uh, we have, in the years past, and we try to do something different every year, put it to music. And uh, so sometimes you'll have uh, Who Let the Dogs Out, sometimes you'll have dueling banjos with the balloons twinkling. So it, it's really an amazing sight. For the general public, Balloon Fest is a spectacle, a chance to see huge, lighter-than-air aircrafts reaching as high as 80 feet and stretching 60 feet across. But for the pilots, Balloon Fest is a competition, a chance to show off just how good they are by hitting designated targets from hundreds of feet up. Well, Saturday morning is when the pilots get excited because that is actually the competition part. That's when that starts. And these competitions count towards the um, American Balloon Federation, I think it's ABF, that they compete for points that they can do across the country when they do these different uh, ballooning events. A Balloon Federation of America has a hot air competition division of which most of the pilots that are here this uh, weekend are part of the BFA and we subscribe to this uh, uh, division for um, uh, competition. So they're given certain tasks, um, sometimes they're at the field, sometimes you know they scout out different places whether it's you know AU property or I know they've gone out over well research before, uh, they've picked maybe some farms that they have to um, be able to target. While the pilots compete, the public can enjoy games, music, food, and the chance to socialize with their neighbors in a truly family-friendly atmosphere. And even though there's only a couple of hours where there's hot air balloons during the course of a Saturday or a Friday night here, I think the, the, the social aspect is huge. There's so many people on this big field. They, they enjoy seeing their friends and neighbors in the community just uh, standing around listening to the music and enjoying the, the uh, social aspect of it. I like to call it one of Midwest's largest picnics. The festival wraps up Sunday with one final competition flight and one last chance to see the majestic balloons in action. That's a really great time to come out because it is so quiet and there's hardly anybody on the field. The dew is still fresh and just the sight and the sounds of the hot air balloons is like something you will never experience um, unless you come out to your field. Balloon Fest has been a summer tradition in Ashland for more than two decades. It's an event that would not happen without generous sponsors and hundreds of volunteers. Ashland Balloon Fest is a community, family-friendly event put on entirely by sponsorships and volunteers. And if it wasn't for the sponsorship dollars, this four-day festival, as close to the 4th of July as we can get, uh, wouldn't be possible. Well, it first starts out with an organizer, a local organizer from the community and a variety of other supportive uh, folks. Without a sponsor and the, the uh, event community uh, that, that comes together um, to provide the financial resources to assist this event to really make it happen, it'd really be difficult because pilots have to come from pretty distant uh, places to come to, uh, to fly their equipment. 
A four-day event like this takes an enormous amount of dedication, energy, volunteers, and unfortunately money. Um, and all of that comes from the sponsors. Lots of people want to help out. Um, most of the pilots already have established crew because they've been here several times. Um, so they utilize most of those people. That, plus we have a lot of long-term volunteers that have volunteered year after year that do a wonderful job for us. That's what it's all about, it's the volunteers. That's what makes it successful. I think the popularity and the success of the event comes from the heart of the volunteers and our sponsors because you really have to be dedicated to put in this kind of hour, this many hours for this type of event, um, really for nothing more than to see the joy on, you know, people from all ages, from little toddlers, you know, all the way up to, you know, 80, 90 years old if they can come out to the field. Preparation for Balloon Fest begins each year in the fall. Organizers spend months securing sponsors, volunteers, pilots, housing, and entertainment. But the best laid plans can always be spoiled by the one thing no one can control, the weather. Mother Nature can create tricky situations that require careful organization to ensure the safety of the pilots and the public. The most difficult part of this four-day event, I would have to say, is probably weather. And for the public to understand that what may seem like a beautiful, sunny, warm, non-windy day on the ground, if you go 10, 20 feet up in the air, it could be very, very dangerous for pilots. And believe me, pilots want to fly just as much as we want to see them fly. Um, and they will make every effort to make sure that they can or cannot, because safety is our number one. We become basically micrometeorologists because we have to look at weather at such a finer detail than what the TV newscasters give you and even airplane pilots. Uh, most of the flight services uh, only give us the three, six, and 9,000 foot winds where we need the 500, 1,000, 1,500. So you will see us doing uh, helium balloons to look at the direction. Um, if we're using a theodolite, it will also tell us speed. There is some danger element to it, and they have to be careful uh, with what the weather is going on. Even a storm that is brewing, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles away can have effect on the winds, and that's what they look at. They look at the winds. That's why balloons only fly in the mornings, and, you know, at dawn and at dusk, is because the weather is a little bit more predictable during that time than during, during the daytime. Based upon all those weather parameters, if it's within certain regulations and rule parameters that we have to fly in, then we'll call a, a, a flight and open up the field for an operation. Now there's a flagpole and will change from red to green when the weather conditions are right on Friday and Saturday nights. And when that goes green, all of a sudden you see the pilots and their chase vehicles. They all start moving out to the center of the field. They start pulling the baskets out and you can just feel the excitement starting to grow. A hot air balloon with its basket and fuel tanks can weigh more than a thousand pounds. So when the weather does cooperate, spectators get the chance to see the pilots and crews in action as they complete the carefully choreographed routine that gets a hot air balloon in the air. We get the um, balloon out, we get the basket out, we put everything together, put like as far as like this here, the uprights are already on, but with our other balloon you have to you have to put the uprights on, you have to put you hook the lay the basket over, you hook the basket on or the, the balloon on. Um, you stretch everything out, take the um, Velcro straps off, get everything prepared, and the pilot just kind of walks up and says, okay, I'm ready, you know, and then we hold the mouth of the balloon open and hold inflate with the fans, and then that's when the pilot takes over. He puts the hot air in. He's the one in control of the burner. Once the balloon's inflated, there are, we're adjusting our instruments, to before we take off, um, we heat the balloon to what we call equilibrium, which is the weight inside the basket is equal to the lift. So we're just floating above the ground and you'll see sometimes pilots jump up and down in a balloon right before they take off. They're testing the equilibrium to see if the balloon is hot enough. Then as we're flying, 
We can cool, let the balloon cool naturally to level off or start into a descent, or we have a, what we call red line, which will pull the deflation port down, let heat out of the top, and then uh, level us out or start us into a descent. And then if you're watching pilots when they land, when they touch down, they'll pull hard on that red line just to set themselves to, to keep them in place. Actually flying a balloon is harder than flying an airplane. Because an airplane, you've got your joystick. If you turn this joystick to the right, you're gonna go to the right. Where in ballooning, you burn and there's a, a time lapse where it'll take a few moments for that burn to get up into the balloon and do what it is that you want it to do. So, and, and that's another thing, all right, how much of a burn do I have to put in? When do I need to put that burn in? On an, on an average flight, we'll say a 70 or 75 degree day, with the two burners, I'll burn between 15 and 20 gallons of liquid propane and um, for about an hour flight. And depending on how fast the wind is, Sometimes you'll travel three or four miles, some tra sometimes you'll travel seven or eight miles, um, sometimes it's 10 or 15 miles. It, it really just depends on the winds and the altitude you're at. Well, learning how to fly is just about learning anything else that you would in school. You have to scaffold your information, all right? So an well, that's what we call an education scaffolding, all right? You start off with your base. In ballooning, you've got to know the weather. In any form of aviation, you have to know weather. And then everything else, you build off of that. Um, you have to know what the winds are doing. Um, you have to know the laws. You have to know what it, when you can fly, when you can't fly. Um, you have to know, all right, if it's this hot, you know, 85, 90 degrees, who can I take in my balloon? Is it even smart for me to fly in the balloon? The critical times in ballooning would be the takeoff and landing. When you're taking off, you have to make sure there's no obstacles downwind because you're starting your climb and you don't want to rock it out of a place. You want a nice gentle climb for the passenger. And then also on landing, um, nowadays the, the new wires they're putting up are environmental friendly, so it's harder to see them. So we look for poles. If, the general rule is if you see a pole, pretend there's wires there. Whether there are or not, it's a safe rule. So the chase crew helps inflate the balloon, and then um, we travel the whole distance that he does, but he's flying a straight line, and we're in a vehicle driving on the, all these roads. So it gets kind of crazy, and um, we usually get there quite a while after he does. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of responsibility, and a little worry to go with it. There are about 4,000 licensed hot air balloon pilots in the U.S. It takes 20 hours of ground school and at least 10 hours of flight time before you can earn a license. But for those who have had the privilege of being up in a balloon, all the training is worth it. The biggest, I guess it would be thrill that I like to see is a person flying for their first time. The nervousness, the anxiety before they get in the basket, the nervousness and anxiety right after they get in the basket and we take off, and then the exhilaration on their face after we land and they just they can't believe what a wonderful flight it was. The first flight my mom, my wife Sherry and our oldest son David flew and I was part of the chase crew and got hooked. As we were going up I don't really care for heights you know I'm not petrified to death of them but I don't really care for heights but I'll try something once, you know? And I thought, okay, let's do this. And um, the whole way going up, I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But once we got out up there, it was so beautiful and peaceful and just, it was surreal. It was amazing. It is so peaceful up there versus being on the ground, but, but yet you still hear like dogs barking. You still hear like somebody can yell up to you and say hi, and yeah. you can yell back down to them. And so it's it's just amazing. And then finally in Canton, I got my first ride, and uh, it was like everyone else's first ride, unbelievable. And uh, when my father was alive, he was a fixed wing pilot, and uh, never got to fly with him, but um, just took up a different type of flying. 
our middle son, Joshua, he was petrified and he sat down on the bottom of the basket and we went up to like 3,000 feet and he, we finally talked him into standing up and looking over but he was petrified. And I even kind of had to force him to go. I, I was like, you never have to do it again, but you have to try it once, you know? Well, he's hooked, he wants to fly now. So they love it, all three of my boys loved it. Within 10 minutes of my launch experience, I was already hooked and uh, started from there and got my license a year later, bought a balloon and been flying since 2000. It is probably the most calming uh, sensation. It is my, my go-to place where, almost like my serenity. There aren't any problems that, any problems I have with school or whatever, they never follow me in the balloon. This past January 2011, we took off from Bryan, Ohio, which is six miles from the Indiana border. I was flying my 90,000 cubic foot balloon, which is called Endeavor and took off and climbed up to 11,500 feet and was cruising at 52 miles an hour and ended up flying four hours and 45 minutes, 197 miles. We landed just south of I-70 and just west of I-77 in Cumberland. The previous long jump um, I had taken off from Bryan, Ohio, flew 163 miles and at 11,500 feet was cruising at 72 miles an hour. At that, at that altitude, you have 737s or any type of plane going over the top of you at 500 feet and underneath you, both on instruments. So you have a small window to stay in because you're up there playing with the big boys. There are roughly 10 ballooning events in Ohio and the Ashland Balloon Fest is clearly one of the most popular. Nearly 30 pilots attend, which ensures a good show for the thousands of spectators who keep coming back for more each year. I, but I think the fact that it's free, um, it has become an Ashland tradition. I, it's something that people look forward to, plan their vacations around, plan homecomings around, um, family reunions. Uh, we get requests from all over the country um, about uh, when our fest, know, knowing for sure when the dates are so they can plan their vacations for the next year. And, and you know, our goal is that it just continues to grow and flourish and is sponsored by the community. What's the secret to getting people here? I, I really think it's the, the word of mouth, the enthusiasm of one person having come back from a balloon fest and telling their neighbors or their friends, you've got to get there next year. It's really a great time. The pilots come to this event because they want to. They love Ashland community. They love to come and spend four days in our community flying over our skies and seeing all that Ashland has to offer. We always love coming down here because the, the crowd is just right here, they're close. When we, like when we fly out tonight, the, the announcer does a wonderful job of having everyone cheer for us as we leave. Um, it's always very warming, very welcoming. Other events are downsizing. I, I hear it all the time from pilots that there's just, Ashland is one of the best events that they look forward to coming every year.